Hey everybody, Eric here. And in honor of Valentine's Day, the day that this video is being published to YouTube, I wanted to share with you five of the top things I just absolutely love about SketchUp. So let's get to it. So Valentine's Day is all about spreading the love and sharing the love. And the first thing I wanted to do was go ahead and give back a little bit. Um, and by doing so, I want to pull out five things that not just tools individually, but actually five key parts of my workflow so that you'll see how these, these things will actually connect. So let's go ahead and start with the first one, which is finding a Valentine's Day appropriate site that we can geolocate. So let's go ahead and get started right now. Okay, I've got a blank file here. It hasn't been geolocated. I was thinking in order to do this demo, I need a site because geolocation is gonna be the first thing that I wanted to call out or my number five. And um, I was thinking, okay, well, let's find something that's, uh, that would be fun for Valentine's Day. And there is a heart-shaped island actually in New York City, which has a building inspired, actually designed by, but inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. Um, let's pick a location, or sorry, pick a, a region and decide how much we want, maybe a little bit of context for the, the lake shore around the edges. I love geolocation because I can get a little bit bigger area with a little less quality, or I can drill down and get something that's a little bit more accurate and a little bit more detailed. So I'm gonna go with that. That's kind of a nice split the difference between resolution and, um, and the information that I'm, that I'm loading into my model right now. Okay, there it is. So I've got my site. I'm going to turn snapshot off and terrain on. And that's because um, we do have a little island that has, you can see, a little bit of a mound that kind of sticks up. And uh, well, what I wanted to do is call attention not so much to the island, as cool of a shape as it is, but actually to the house that's on the island. So um, fun fact, I think this house, I don't know if it's still owned by Brad Pitt, but was purchased by Angelina Jolie for Brad Pitt as a gift. So very nice. Very nice of her. What I need to do is uh, build this house for this demo, but I don't have time for a skill builder. We'd like to keep these around 10 minutes. So that's what I'm gonna go to my next one over here to my number four things that I love about using SketchUp is how easy it is to find 3D Warehouse. We're just gonna type in Macero, sorry if I spell that right, Macero House, and see what comes up because that's the name of the house. I won't find it under products, but I will find it under models. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And when prompted, put it in my model. So because I'm geolocated, that means that this is actually real world uh, location. So I do need to make sure that the model itself is positioned appropriately. So where, what do we wanna to use to line up for this one? I think, let's go ahead and just use this. I can't see it. It went underwater, that's why. Switch back to plan view. And I'm gonna use this little end piece here and say, I think that lines up there. Grab my protractor tool and flip that around and adjust if needed. But we'll just go ahead and for this demo, call that good enough. Don't want trees in my water. I'm gonna take those out. That's the fun of 3D Warehouse is you get some really, really cool stuff. But at the same time, you get some stuff that maybe needs a little bit of cleanup and that's okay. I'm gonna bring my water level up so I can see it just above the aerial uh, mesh and image in there. Okay, so now two things down that I like. Now the next thing I'd like to do, uh, one thing I wanna point out that I really love about SketchUp is working with components. Now I don't just mean using a component and then copying it and repeating it, which is the sort of key value of the component, but a component like acts a little bit like like a model, an actual file within the file. So if I wanted to, I could save this, this house out and then use it later and then import it later. So I've actually done that already. So if I open up my components window, I have under here, if I go home, what you're gonna see is the components in the model. But if you click on the little drop down, I actually have this section called favorites. I think you should have it too, but I have a few things in my favorites. I have trees, I have transportation, so cars and trucks and things like that, and I have people. Now I do that because I don't like having to either open up an individual file or search for things on 3D Warehouse every single time. I like to use, I like to use a lot of the same assets over and over again for consistency in my models. So there we go. I knew I had a girl or a woman taking a photo and I thought, oh, that would be, um, that would be pretty cool for this 
for where she is here. So let's lift that up just a little bit more because, because I'm a stickler for detail and I don't like seeing the, there we go. Okay, flip her around and she's ready to kind of capture a cool shot of that balcony, that overhang or cantilever. So that was number three, which was not just the use of components, but the idea of having a favorites library or a series of favorites folders that you can use. Just a little tip here, if you're not sure how that feature works, you can open up a local collection or create a new collection with some things that are already in your model. And when you do that, it's going to give you the option. So if I was just, say, browsing to a folder that has some stuff, it gives you the option of saying add to favorites. So if you wanted to create a folder, if you had a folder with all your cars or all your trees or all your people or whatever that is that you use all the time, just go ahead and say add to favorites. And next time you go pull those up, it's very quick to find all of them. So just want to make sure I explain that. The next thing that I love here, now that I've got a site, now that I have my terrain and my location, I love to style my model and save it to a scene. So one thing I love to do is play with styles. Now, nothing wrong with the textures that came in with this one from 3D Warehouse. Um, I think it looks pretty good, actually, compared to some of the stuff that I find. But um, sometimes I like to draw over the top of something, or I just like to keep it really minimal and use text. And so in this case, the, the, I'm going to pretend like the materials are a little bit, maybe a little bit distracting. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn that off. You can edit the style using the face styles or opening up the styles panel. And from here, I have control over the color of the edges. If I want to do something really radical like pink, or if I wanted to go really dark or really thick, if I wanted to just do something a little bit more diagrammatic, that's kind of cool. Uh, typically, I turn my profiles to one because I like it sort of nice and um, thin. And then I bring my, I use something like a, a medium or gray rather than a black. And that just kind of lightens the model up for me. And if I wanted to, I could really push it and go something like really, really light and almost. I don't know, maybe that's too light. I, I think it looks nice. So from there, um, depending on what we do, we can add watermarks. Like if I wanted to come in here and go style this, this a little bit more, I might put in a sky watermark, which I think is kind of cool. I use watermarks all the time, sometimes to match up images. Sometimes it's to um, like where I want to match it to. It's uh, kind of like photo match. You know, it's kind sort of another way to do photo match. I also like watermarks to do composition grids, sometimes to put logos and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and update this style. So that's looking kind of cool, actually. So speaking of watermarks and styles, I want to save this style to a scene. And I want to figure out how to sort of get a, like a nice composition on it. So if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you may have already kind of know that I like to work with composition grids. Well, SketchUp um, has the ability to add one as a watermark. So I'm going to go back to the watermarks again, the same place, and I'm actually going to add another one. So the cool thing about watermarks is uh, you can add as many as you want. In this case, I can go background or overlay. I want this in the front because I actually want to use this to, to help me align where I want to place my model for my final view. And not worry about that. Uncheck aspect ratio and finish this. So again, let me see. I've got my woman here, my lady that's taking a picture. I'm going to put her in the bottom corner of this scene, something like maybe right there. And then I want to turn this so that the this column or this support structure uh, for the cantilever and the water line, the water level, so the horizon line sort of line up. I'm being a little bit picky here because this is actually, for me, one of the most fun parts. I'm going to set that to two-point perspective. So to get rid of that camera distortion and pop back over here to styles, get rid of that watermark because I don't need that. And there we go. So before I move away from my number two thing I love about SketchUp, that's styles and scenes. Part of styling to me is shadows. I know technically that can be its own thing right there. What I'm talking about is more than one thing, but I'm thinking about shadows as styling your model. And I'm also thinking about scenes as saving um, those styles so that you can uh, keep them and come back to them. So in this case, I can change the darkness and make this really dramatic, or I can push this up and make it really, really light. And I like being able to control how that looks. And because we geolocated our model, if I wanted to know exactly what the sun was doing on the summer solstice, I could come over here and just play with, with the time of day. So both the time of day and the season to get something pretty cool. And once I'm happy, I can just come over here. I have a shortcut for this, so I'm just gonna use a shortcut. I'm going to add a scene. And that way, 
the style settings and the location and the camera and the shadows, all that stuff is saved. So that was super easy. So at this point, I am down to my number one thing I love about working with SketchUp, and that's the ability to go to layout anytime I want. In order to do that, first thing I need to save this, and I'll just call this V-Day because it's Valentine's Day and showing a little bit of love here today. Once I've saved my model, I can come over here and say send to layout. And it doesn't matter what the template size is for this. There it is. So it's using the last, it's using my scene that I set up, which is kind of cool. So if I wanted to, I could shrink that down. I could do something a little bit interesting. I'm going to copy and paste this because the beauty of layout is not just getting a version of my scene. That's one thing that looks kind of cool. But most importantly, or what I really love is that a model in, in SketchUp is great for viewing and working on. But when I'm ready to um, print it or something or, or draw on top of it, often I need it to be to scale. So I'm going to switch this from scene one. Since I only saved that perspective view, I can switch to my standard views, say top. And in this case, I want to make sure that I say ortho. And the current scale, I'm not sure that's working for me. Let's give it something like one inch equals 30 feet. Maybe we move that over. And then what we do is we put this here and then shift that around and do something maybe kind of interesting with the layout of the floor plan. I don't know. I'm just making this up on the spot. I just kind of, I just want to make sure I feel like I've done it a little bit justice. So being in layout is pretty cool because it's really, really super, super fast to get my drawing in, change the window or the viewport size, throw a scale on it. And then of course, from here, if this was really important, it depends on why exactly I need to be in layout but I can come in here and start to dimension, or I can come in here and throw some labels and some tags on this. Really sort of take my drawing to the next level. So that's it for my quick five things I absolutely love about working in SketchUp. The things that make my life not just easier and more efficient, but also just a joy to use because it's because it's frictionless. And that's the thing that really makes it um, not just easy, but fun. And that's uh, we're here to have fun as much as we are to get stuff done. So on that note, I want to leave you by saying, don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, of course, comment. Do you have five things? What's the one thing, actually? If you can't give me five, give me the one thing in the, in the comments that SketchUp just does better than anyone else or that you couldn't live without or you just enjoy, you just like love watching I don't know, follow me is another fun one. Uh, if I had more than five, uh, it's a fun just to think, make things and follow me. So I'm going to leave you on that note. I'm going to say thanks for watching and see you next time.